channel. I'm still decoding the blood moons. Actually, I went into looking at some of the previous blood moons. And I wanted to share this big revelation that I got from doing that. It's actually kind of like really exciting. And it all ties into this Rites of Spring, which is in the Fantasia movie and which ties to the ritual that was done in 1939 with the Eva Marie song being sung at the Lincoln Memorial, which was in my last video. So I went back and looked at that Fantasia movie and I was quite shocked to see that the, the world is burning. Uh, they also have Noah's Ark in there. They do have Dionetus with the unicorn. They have the centaurs, which is Chiron, right? He's the teacher of uh, Asclepius, the guy holding the snake in the Ophiuchus constellation, which is the doorway out of here. So I want to discuss a lot of um, symbolism that ties to uh, the blood moon in 2022. There's two of them, but the May 15th one. And you guys are going to get blown away with the symbolism that ties to this blood moon. It's six months away. And I'm starting to think that the um, mid of tribulation is that blood moon. And the Pi Day is the end of tribulation. So we need to go in and look at all the symbolism that is tied to that. And uh, Trump told us um, on previous blood moons... Uh, the importance of them. So we're going to get all into that today. It also ties to the Alpha and Omega. It ties to um, the James Bond movies. It ties to um, the God Pan. Okay, so this is why this video is a little long because a lot of information to go through, not a lot of reading, but I'm just showing a lot of symbolism through it. So stay with me because this is probably the most important, one of the most important videos I've ever done to help you understand the symbolism of um, what's being projected at us for these blood moons. So this part of the 1940 Fantasia movie was cut out and it was because it was threatening Christianity because they had Dionysus and you'll see the, the little donkey, he's a unicorn. They make him look like a doofus, but he is a unicorn. Now the unicorn ties to April 9th when um, Martha Luther King uh, got buried, which is number 49 because on the uh, 49th day of the fetus, the soul enters the body. I discussed that uh, in my last video and you get a DMT hit, okay? Same as you would on mushrooms. They have the mushrooms dance in the Fantasia movie. They have the Noah's Ark, uh, and which ties to the unicorn song, right? Because the unicorn doesn't get on the ark. And they also have the world burning and the green nymph, which would be symbolism to the green man, uh, coming back and bringing the world back. Okay, so there's lots of symbolism in that movie, in the old movie. So you have to go back on YouTube. I'll drop the links because a lot of these pieces were cut out of the movie. And uh, it's really important to understand what the original movie represented, which is really you know, the uh, Ragnarok, it's like the end of times, right? So when the world kind of uh, burns and uh, souls are separated into two different realities. Some are unicorns, some get on the ark. If you're an awakened soul right now, you need to be feeling like the unicorn or you are feeling like the unicorn, like you're isolated, you're, you know, not noticed, you're invisible, right? So you're not on the ship with everybody else. You're uh, rejecting the ship and being the silly unicorn, um, but it is the path because the unicorn disappears from this realm. In Gematria, unicorn ends up coming to 94, which is the reverse of 49, which is National Unicorn Day is April 9th because of the number 49 relating to the soul. Lots of other uh, symbolism with the number 49 here. Washington, Super Bowl, Donald J. Trump, Dallas... America, Eagles, Revelation, the number 24, which is Zeus, Jupiter's alchemic symbol, Twin Towers, JFK, and the Lord, all number 49. 49th parallel is the border between the U.S. and Canada. Bob Dylan just came out with a song called Days of 49. 
And of course, in football, you have the 49ers that happen to be in San Francisco, where the Golden Gate Bridge is, right? And that's the Golden Gate is where the nebula of, uh, not the nebula, but the golden egg of the, of the Milky Way crosses the elliptic, which is at Christmas, right? That's the Golden Gate in the sky. And of course, the Trump campaign used uh, Trump's face on a 49er, uh, you know, so it, it's just funny, you know, it's, it's like, it's an important number because it has to do with the soul. And it's the unicorn. So my interest got piqued when I saw this asteroid that NASA is talking about that's coming into close to Earth on May 6th in 2022. Now this is called the 2009 JF1 and it has a 1 in 3800 chance of hitting Earth and if it does hit Earth it's uh, like 150 Hiroshima uh, bombs going off. So it's in conjunction with Jupiter and Neptune and Venus all on the tail of the whale. Tail of the whale is important because that's uh, the spring equinox, that's where the sun is, and this also ties to Pi Day, the, the location of this part of the sky. Sitis is the, the beast in the sky, right? And Pisces is your spiritual journey. It's your souls, your two fish. So the, the constellation is Pisces, but it's like the tail of the whale because the beast is below Pisces. So this is an important location in the sky on May 6th in 2022. So it's like six months away. Osiris, you know, the king, he's in the, the silver gate, which is between the horns of Taurus. Now here's the list of blood moons, right? And I really thought tribulation started on last on this year actually on May 26 we had a blood moon but I'm starting to think now that it actually started in um, 2018 on July 27th because Trump gave us some clues about that so if that's the case Pi Day would be the end of tribulation where uh, you know he comes back and saves all the souls that you know have to live through the three and a half years of hell on earth and then the mid-tribulation would be this blood moon on May 16th, which would be 10 days after this asteroid. You know, if the asteroid does hit, it doesn't impact, uh, would it, you know, obviously that would bring us 10 days of darkness, right? So this is why this all ties into the 17th letter uh, post, the 10 days of darkness. So I'm just going through this and seeing if uh, there was any drops with Trump on these other blood moons and there was so I'm gonna go through them and it's really coded and there's tons of movies relating to this blood moon in 2022 there's songs relating to it and I will show you how it's all coded to this uh, 2022 um, May 16th blood moon the 2018 blood moon happened at 333 was in conjunction with uh, Mars right on the beginning of Capricorn. And this is where Pluto was on the founding of the United States and where he will be again in 2024 on January 6th, uh, which we makes his one whole cycle of 248 years. Okay, so that's that would be really connected to the whole um, esoteric symbolism of the beginning of the founding of the state, United States. So. I'm thinking this is probably the first day of tribulation. Trump does this speech at the White House to these graduating students. And he's taught, this is how CNN puts it, okay, or CNBC. They say, President Trump speaks at the face-to-face -face with our future event. And this was on June 27, 2018. This was the blood moon. Okay, and he mentions... Um, you know, you got to know your path when you know what you want in life. Don't ever give up. Don't ever, like, um, you know, uh, give up what you dream and know what you like and go for it. And if you don't like it, change it. But then he says, you know, you could go to NASA um, and become a space cadet. And they all laugh, right? So, uh, you know, and then he talks about the wall also. So he brings the wall into it and he talks about being a space cadet if you, you know, go into the sky. Then he does a rally that night and talks about uh, the super elite are, are you and me. We're the super elite. Then there was an article written about what he was saying. And it says here, the wise man builds bridges, 
the fool builds walls. Okay, and the whole thing about the fool, you know that this is alpha, the fool card. It's it's Uranus. It is freedom. Uh, it's Aquarius, right? Uh, is what rules um, Uranus rules Aquarius. It's knowledge. I know. It's the fool, right? So the fool is being represented in relation to the wall. Okay, now I'm going to get into that, why that is so important. The next blood moon was January 21st, 2019. And of course, that happens to be Martin Luther King Day. Now we know Martin Luther King is all tied to the number 49 because they buried him on April 9th. And he, uh, you know, the day before, well, the night day he died, he said, can you please sing, take my hand, precious Lord. Right, so this all ties into um, Elvis Presley sang that song, Aretha Franklin sang that song, and they all died on August 16th with a Saturn Sun conjunction. The, the song is important, and the number 49 is important. Okay, so he goes and visits Martin Luther King's grave on this day of this blood moon, the second blood moon, and it's unannounced. He just decides to do it, it wasn't on his schedule, he just decides to go there. So this is what he says. Today we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for standing up for his self-evident truth Americans hold so dear. And no matter what the color of your skin or the place of our birth, we are all created equal by God. Trump tweeted on Monday morning on this second blood moon. So this blood moon, really important location. Um, actually, it's where I was born. It's kind of weird, but um, it's it's on the Tegman star, which is your shield. It's your armor of God. And this, of course, the constellation Cancer is ruled by the moon, the only constellation ruled by the moon. And this would be the gateway of man or the manger of Jesus is right on the back of Cancer, which is called the beehive cluster. Now, it happened at midnight. I have it at 11.11, like 11 minutes after midnight. But it's a midnight blood moon. Okay, so this is very important. And some Christians noticed the importance of this. So they uh, had put on Facebook Live, blood moon at midnight, White House watchmen. Okay, so they're, they're watching. So they're saying it happened at 1212. Okay, so they're saying, uh, here are a few thoughts. First, I believe 1212 speaks of a gateway into greater um, apostolic governments. Without knowing anything about the blood moon, we prophesize the entry through the apocalypse gateway at midnight on New Year's Eve, when Jamie Jackson uh, following declared it's time. So they're saying here, what I'm saying is it's the third year of the king of Cy uh, Cyrus. A message was revealed. This means something. So they're just like paying attention, right? These Christians are like, okay, there's something biblical going on here with this uh, blood moon at midnight. So what's weird is that blood moon to this May 15th blood moon next year is exactly 12, 12 days. So they're saying the moon was at 12, 12, you know, uh, you know, you could say that, I guess. Uh, but then, you know, here there, here we have 12, 12 days from that moon to this other moon next year. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's weird. Exactly three years and three months away. So we got 33 Freemason number. The Midnight Moon is actually a book as well. And this is hilarious. There's a Midnight Blood Moon Bliss. You guys know how I always go on about bliss, right? And so then we get into the clock. And all I know is the, the midnight hour, because of Cinderella and her reality changes at midnight, here's a hermetic, uh, really old picture of Odin, you know, the reaper, uh, with the clock at midnight. The watches are important, right? For like for the watchmen. The blood moon Seiko is a, a watch and Seiko means force truth. Okay, so now we get to the blood moon that I'm so concerned about on this May 16th, 10 days after this asteroid in 2022. And it's actually at midnight. Okay, this is why I'm going on about the whole midnight thing is because you know, this is a very important blood moon in Libra. Now, Libra represents Astraea, the goddess Astraea. She was the, the last titan going around trying to get everybody back to the golden age. 
and she represents justice. So she's the justice card, and the justice card is Omega. The Fool is Alpha, the justice card is Omega. If you, you can go back and watch my tarot card video I did explaining all this. Why is this so important, the Alpha Omega? Because in Revelation 22:13, Jesus says, I am Alpha and the Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. Now, what I believe, you know, they say Jesus returns in the flesh. I believe we are Jesus and we are walking in his path right now. We're being persecuted. We're the healers. Uh, people are ridiculing us and they basically don't care about us, right? And they will throw us under the bus and if they have to stick us up on a cross and kill us and stick a, a thorn crown on us because they, they have no compassion because we're not following group think. And this is basically Jesus's path. So I think we're all Jesus as a collective, right? And that is how you, um, you resurrect. You walk through the veil. You basically die through... Um, you know, Scorpio, which is, you know, transformation, death, it rules the house of death, transformation, and you, that's your Pluto, your soul, and you walk through Ophucius with your snake, and you, you are actually, you come back, and then you disappear. This is the whole thing with the pagan um, pre-Christianity mythology to do with the rites of spring and the helm of, ha of Hades, which is the invisible mass. It all ties in to the same story. It's just different layers of the story. And this is where the blood moon was in May of this year. And you see these lines here where it says Descuba. That's the claw or the tail of Scorpio, but it's known as the claw. Okay, so it's saying here about the claw. In Scorpio. So in earlier times Libra was represented not by a balance but as a clause of Scorpio. At first Scorpio held the scales in his claw or his uh, claws were the scales. The Zubin prefix in the name of the stars of Libra is from the Arabic word the claw. So yeah, so even the Roman created the constellation um, Chila, which is claw, was a common Roman title for Libra. So, yeah, so there's definitely the, the claw was holding the scales, and this ties to, um, you know, Scorpio being your soul, right? So you have to balance your, your soul and, with love, and um, because it's ruled by, Libra's ruled by Venus. Okay, so now, now that we know that, the claw, there you go, here's, here's with Trump, ain't no laws when drinking the claw, right? So it's a drink, it's a MAGA claw drink, okay? So <laughs> the symbolism is like unbelievable. So even here they have a machine in, uh, I think it's in Delaware, Donald Trump themed claw machine that includes Dr. Anthony Fauci doll hanging from a paper mask. Okay, like this is like getting nuts. It's like, it's, it's comical. So this midnight blood moon in, in Libra, also the use means law. Then it goes to the, um, the pound and the lyra ties to Libra. And then the palm of your hand ties to Libra. The name Palamedes or Palam, palm of the hand. Okay, so then didn't we just have a big giant CME hit the earth and then the volcano um, Palma was the one where it exploded because that's where the CME hit? See, so you see what I'm saying? It's like it's getting like bizarro. So in the pagan tradition, May when this blood moon is, May 16th, but on May Day, it's the, the Beltane, right? So what is the Beltane? It's the start of summer celebration. The bonfires represent the growing power of the sun from spring to midsummer. It's also tied to the May Queen and the Green Man. Okay, so there's big bonfires uh, set, but I believe it ties to you know, it says here it ties to the white woman as well. I believe it's like ascension, right? You're, it's like you're burning. You're, you become the phoenix, which all ties to Dinitis and the rites of spring 
which was all tying to the Fantasia movie, right? So it's like spring is ascension. It's your rebirth. So you're born again in spring. So this is why, um, you know, I was thinking Pi Day was really important. But if Pi Day is in March, it's not really green yet. And this is uh, more for infinity. And I'm starting to think now that that's the end of tribulation. Okay, so if this is blood moon in, in six months from now, would be like mid-trib. Okay, so this is really important. So the Beltane Festival, they had this beautiful festival in Scotland, I think in uh, 2015, with this beautiful uh, celebration. And they had naked people, okay, and the green men. And, of course, they were burning them like as if they were, you know, the phoenix. So it's the symbolism is there. It all goes to the rites of spring and it ties to Dionetus. And the green man, Dionetus, he ends up being Pan. Okay, so he's a half goat, half man. Everybody thinks he's the devil. I have an amazing video that a friend uh, in, in uh, Ireland sent me, one of the, my subscribers. Amazing video explaining all this. It's an esoteric video from Alan Pittman. And I'll drop that in the link and how he ended up becoming uh, the devil, but they turned him red. Okay. He's Pan. He's actually um, Hermes's son with a nymph. Okay. So it's, it's really Dionetus. Okay. In the end, Pan, the green man, Dionetus, they're all the same person. And a huge tradition is to dance around the maypole, and then you can see the green man is there. The maypole would represent the obelisk, like it's really the tree of life. Now, May Day is a word for stress, right? So they said that it came from May a day, which is help me in French. Uh, a day is help me. So I don't know, but it's the point is they're using now as a stress call. But what's so weird is it also ties to a pan pan call. Now this is also French for pané, a breakdown, indicates an urgent situation such as a mechanical failure or a medical problem. It's called a pan-pan. So this is also, they're tying the green man, the pan um, god, to May, right? Because it's, it's ties to May. It's all part of the rites of spring of Dionysus. Now, of course, they coded all this stuff in James Bond movies. So someone will take care of you, May Day, to James Bond. May Day was this actress, Grace uh, Jones. And here she is dressed up almost like the Pan, right? She has the horns on her head, May Day. All the gods loved Pan. They thought he was amazing. Um, and he created the Pan flute. And here he is with all the, you know, the spheres of all the planets. Now his glyph, there's an asteroid, 4450 uh, Pan, and of course it's the Omega symbol. It's Libra again. Libra is the Omega symbol. So is Pan. Okay, now this symbol means death, transformation. Eighth house, ruled by Scorpio, Fucius, which is, you know, your transformation. It's uh, Pluto, ruled by Pluto, your soul. So in planets, Pan would be Pluto. Because you panic, and Pluto relates to fear, right? It's, it's May Day, the stress call. It's because you have to learn to transmute your fear so that you pass through this realm. You have to be in bliss state to get out of here. You can't be in fear. You can't be uh, depressed and, and letting this realm get to you. You just have to be the fool and just go, I'm in bliss. I don't care what's going on. Because this is how you escape this realm, is when you laugh at the devil, and you, you pull the curtain back, and you see that in the Wizard of Oz, it's just, you know, a joke. He's not really that powerful. And it's a test. It's a test to your ability to see through the illusion. So even here, the Trump administration got into this thing with the omega protein, we calling uh, fish oil. So it's like fish is your soul, souls are your feet. That's how you, it's your, you know, it's why Pisces is the constellation that rules the spirituality. And then they have here with uh, Donald Trump Jr. with uh, Alpha and Omega. So see how they drop it in. It's, it, it's just a game. And I, I know it's hard to believe that, but, and it can cause you to feel like you're not um, in reality, but 
you have to understand it's it's this, we're, we're in like a giant video game and you need to to see how the door opens by believing it can open if you think that this realm is real and everything is happening is real and th these times that are so um pathetic or is just an is is just a joke then you're not going to believe that the door is going to open for you and you have to believe and you have to see that this realm is an illusion. We do create with our thoughts and our emotions, right? So we are creating this realm as a whole. So we have to believe that there's another realm, the Alice Universe Theory, quantum physics, okay? If you want to Google this, Google non-oriental wormholes. It'll bring you to all this science, okay, which goes to the Cheshire charge, the cat that disappears in and out of this realm, same as the unicorn, okay, so it's all science, but um, it's hypothetical science, but it's still science, so you have to work through this, uh, this quantum science and understand you're a quantum being, you're, you're able to transcend from this illusion, so they had a watch, a mega Pi Pan Constellation watch. So it's a mega constellation, but this watch is called the Pi Pan. And it's because it's like the, the face of it is like an upside down Pi Pan. And that's why they call it that, supposedly. But I know esoterically it's because it's linked to Omega, right? Pan is linked to Omega. And then they also have Pi, which is like Pi Day also. So they have the two blood moons, the Pan blood moon and the Pi Day blood moon which is in 2025 on Pi Day, March 14th. This ad, you know, had me going, watch the water, um, a couple of years ago. And now I understand what it means because he's being pulled out like on a fish hook out of the water. He's Aquarius. He's being pulled out. He's the Phoenix being pulled out. And this is the Aquarius card, which is the star card, which is what you want. Right? You want to be the star. You want to be on the fish hook getting pulled out of the fixed cross. Aquarius, Uranus, the Phoenix. Star card is number 17. Letter Q. So Omega has been really busy over the last few decades showing us, you know, you, you're basically going to have your wings. You're going to become the Phoenix. They even have here, I choose uh, Omega to be the first watch on the moon. So JFK knew about all this. Yeah, they're all the elite. They know the game, okay? Um, then they had Buzz, you know, Eldrin, who was at that executive order signing with Trump all about infinity and beyond because that's the saying that Buzz Lightyear in the Toy Story movie says, infinity is Pi Day. And, of course, he wore the first Omega watch to the moon. If they went to the moon, who the heck knows? But whether they did or they didn't, the watch is involved. This is why the Trump team had Trump with the infinity hand, which was Thanos, and Thanos means death, okay, because death is like Omega, right? And then he was holding up the Buzz Lightyear doll, and then Jimmy Fallon makes a comment about Trump talking like Buzz Lightyear, like, you know, as a child, okay? So it's like, they all know. So they relaunched the Omega constellation, which would be Libra, I always wondered why the hands of the clock are at this these markers, right? So this watch is called the Seamaster, and they have these numbers on the outside that don't really make sense to me. Maybe it has something to do with naval, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure. But if you look at the outside numbers, it will come to, you know, the number, like it's like two and three. It's like you got the three, and then on the other side, you've got like, okay, that's like 21, is it? 20, 21. And then down at the bottom, it's looking like, okay, it's 23 minutes to the hour on this minute hand. And then the other hand is also um, 23 minutes. So I think they're putting it so it's like the number 23, so that, you know, this is to do with DNA. You know, I don't know. It's just really weird. I, maybe you guys have some clues about it, but they always have the hands of the clocks in this kind of like, it's like, I don't know, eight minutes past 10. So even though it's linking to number 23, maybe 18 goes to the moon card, which is not the good path, right? So the last James Bond movie, 
uh, is Omega and No Time to Die. And it just came out like last month. Here's the Omega watch has it at number 22. So that has it, you know, the year 2022. Or the 22 tarots with the zero card being the 22nd card. The fool card. Yeah, so this is just the trailer and it's so funny. That they go, oh Q, we missed you. I thought that was funny. Okay, so the music that they chose uh, was Billie Eilish. You know, she sang the song. But they also have this other song, the song called Dans la Ville en Dormé. So that means in the city that puts you to sleep. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> and then Louis Armstrong's song, he had these in other um, James Bond movies on Her Majesty's Secret Service. We all, we have all the time in the world. Okay, so this is meaning like, you know, does time exist? You can go watch that, the actual clip for that song. It's from the old movie. Um, and yeah, so anyhow, it's just all to do with time, right? It's whether you believe time is linear or that that you are your quantum and you can jump timelines right this is what it's all about you want to be the unicorn you want to be the cheshire cat you want to escape time so that you become um born again and ageless for the thousand years in paradise and you don't want to go to the sleepy smart cities um when all this stuff starts to go down you want to be free and free as a bird and free to be the unicorn. And if you think what I just said doesn't sound like science, then you haven't been paying attention to the, the scientists, the, the, the renowned scientists of the world. The one who follows the crowd will usually go no further than the crowd. Those who walk alone are likely to find themselves in places no one has ever been before. Albert Einstein. So Juan O. Savan, Kid by the Side of the Road book, he has this magazine, he's explaining it, and he shows his face. And he does look like <laughs> JFK Jr. So anyhow, they, but they go to this page with, his, with Einstein's, you know, E over MC square, right? And he shows the number 17, he shows the LBQ. You have to go watch it. It's just a little teeny clip, and I'll drop the link. But then he goes, when he ta starts talking about E over MC square. He talks about MAGA being over corn. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why this is important. I'm going to get into it after, but I just want you to remember this. Okay, this MAGA over corn, the word corn. Yes, we know that's cornucopia, that's the unicorn. Uh, it's part of drinking the nectar of the gods, but it also ties into this blood moon. And I will get into that after. But anyway, I just want you to remember this, how, you know, they, they love Einstein because Einstein created the speed of light equation on the Zabi Java Ascension star, right? And that was an eclipse that happened on that star. So that's really important. So Einstein knows there's another realm, right? That's what his quote means. You don't follow the crowd. You don't follow groupthink. You, you stand on your own, you become the unicorn, and you'll go places where no one has been before, right? So it's paradise. So there's this old movie from the 60s with Charleston Heston, and it's called The Omega Man. And the whole world has been killed off by a plague. Then there's these um, hooded guys that, you know, are kind of like the walking zombies. And they're, they don't, they're sick. They, they've got the sores, and they're like, they just... But anyhow, they're, they're still alive, but, you know, they're not nice. And then there's Charleston. Has, he's, he's the scientist that is trying to keep, come up with a vaccine to save the children that are healthy. There's some children, a group, and two other people that are healthy, and he's trying to save them. He sits and talks to himself because he thought he was the only person on the, on the planet besides these walking zombies. And this guy that he's talking to, he calls him Caesar. Okay, so it's Julius Caesar, right? It gets stabbed 23 times in the fall of Rome. Washington, D.C. used to be called Rome. Okay, so I'm telling you, the symbolism is literally everywhere. This is way back from the 60s. And then he dies in a fountain, kind of sitting there like Christ with his arms spread. And then he gives of himself the blood and, or the vaccine, you know, because his chest is bleeding. And he gives himself the, the people that as he's dying. Okay, so he's being sacrificed on the cross like Odin does in, in the fountain and as, as well as Jesus. Okay, so 
It's all the same symbolism. Do you notice that he's wearing a green jacket? Then we have the green man that is the Omega Man and the Green Lantern. So that symbolism's out there. You know, this is all to do with the, the Green Man, which is really Dionetus. There's also a Green Man statue in uh, Geos uh, Paxo. And this statue uh, commemorates a local hero. Okay, so during the Greek War of Independence in 1821, he rode out uh, uh, with a light torch to set fire to the Turkish uh, fleet. And then he ends up um, being burnt. That's, that's the end of his story, that he gets burnt alive. Okay, so you get burnt alive, you become the phoenix. That, that all ties into the Green Man, right? Which ties into the Beltane Festival, that you get burnt. This is funny, Pan's Anniversary. There's, it's called the Shepherd's Holiday. Now, there's a discrepancy about when this, there was um, something written and they didn't know what date it was. But then now there's a scholar saying he has the argue for the date was January 6, 1691. And of course, January 6 was when, you know, we had the Odin Wild Protest. Because right? the Wild Protest was Odin's Wild Hunt Day. But it's also Pan's anniversary. So there you go. So if January 6 was the shepherd's holiday, May 6, the day of this asteroid, is also called Shepherd's Day. The day of, um, hang on, it's really hard to read here. Uh, yeah, so anyhow, it's, it's, uh, it's Greek. It's the shepherd's day, May 6. And then on May 15, which is the blood moon, it's the festival of Vesta. Okay, so this it ties into a bride crossing the hearth. And then two days later, it's the Celtic festival of the Greek god Pan. So May 18th is the two days after the blood moon. And this is always like there's this two-day thing with the, with the um, 17th letter movement. It was always this post going two, two days off. So I'm always wondering what that is. But anyhow, it's two days after is the festival of Pan, right after this blood moon. Now, Vesta ties into the Vestal Virgins. Right? There's a song called that. Um, and so the myth depicting Vesta as a priestess were few and were limited to tales of miracle, miraculous uh, impregnation. Yeah, so she's basically like the virgin, right? She's the virgin, you know, uh, Mary. So this ties into... Um, She's the daughter of Saturn and Ops, and the sister of Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto, Juno, and Circe. The Greek equivalent is Hestia. But it ties to uh, her appearing, this phallus appearing as a flame at the hearth, the manifestation of the goddess. So it's like there's a phallus that impregnates her with, it's like a flame. Okay, so this is the Vestal Virgin. So it has to do this May 16th when the blood moon is, right, in Omega, in Libra. It has to do with walking over a threshold. It has to, that's what Vesta means, the festival of Vesta. It's like you're walking, you're, you're taking this ritual and you walk through this door. Um, and the brides were careful not to step on it, like as you step over the hearth into the other realm. Okay, so this is really important that these are all aligning. And here's the Temple of Vesta, really pretty old ruins. So when you research uh, music that has Pan in it, Stevie Wonder has a song called Flower Power from his album, The Secret Life of Plants. Okay, and then Pink Floyd also had The Piper of the Gates of Dawn. This was a book called The Wild in the Willows, which featured Pan on the cover. So I wanted to look into this Stevie Wonder song because I do believe it's super important. Now the devil card would be Pan, right? He's Capricorn. Now Capricorn is Saturn. There's Saturn and Vesta together on this blood moon on May 15th, which is, you know, to do with 
the goddess Vesta uh, celebration day. And the reason I think it's so important is because the May blood moon on May 16th in 2022 is called the flower moon. Okay, so he's got the flower power song and he's got pan in it, okay, in, this, in the lyrics. Now here's the flower moon saying that it's also corn. It's also known as the corn moon. So now we get the corn from uh, the Wano Savan, right? The corn, yes, it relates to the unicorn, but it also relates to the May blood moon. And he says, Pan is my name. I live outside the door. This is Vesta, right? She's the door. Then he says, in a twinkling, I'll be gone. And then he goes, yeah, Suki Suki. And I was like, I wonder what Suki Suki is. And Suki means Lily Rose. Well, Rose is your DNA. So your DNA gets activated. Flower power all through the 60s is talking about this blood moon. It's a flower blood moon. Okay, in 2022, it's six months away. And all these old songs, and, and they were all relating to this. Then there's a movie that came out last year with De Niro and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio called The Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay, so th this is not a coincidence, guys. This is like really important. This is the Pan Festival. It's the, it's the rite of spring. The spring triangle is what Washington, D.C. aligns to, Freemasonry-wise, you know. It's, it's the Washington uh, Monument is the Spica Star and the... You know, you guys have, I've told you guys this a thousand times. The Arturus Artur Star in Boots is King Arthur. It's lines to the White House. The Capitol building is Regulus. This is the Spring Triangle. The rites of spring ties to Pan, ties to Dionysus and becoming free and immortal. That's what it's all built around. With the Flower Moon. Now we've got the Flower Moon. It's all tied to the Flower Moon. The Killers of the Flower Moon movie was actually about the murders of all these Native American uh, people that were on a reserve or on the land which was rich with oil. So they started to become really wealthy and then all of a sudden they started to get murdered. So then the FBI ended up coming into um, fruition because of these murders. So it's really like the Lost Tribe. It was the Osage tribe. So the Lost Tribe, you know, it's like, it's almost like in reference to the tribe disappeared, right? And this is to do with the tribe of Dan in the Bible. At this time when the veil opens, this tribe of Dan disappears. It's the, um, you know, they disappeared at Tinanog. It's like they're, they go to the inner earth or wherever and then they're no longer part of this matrix anymore. But it's interesting how they're tying the movie in because this, tribe disappeared. So the Capitol building is part of the Spring Triangle, right? And it has this amazing painting with George Washington and um, Cyrus uh, on, she's just on top of this kind of straw pile where the uh, rainbow comes down. She's like the goddess of the harvest. But this other goddess that's on her knees picking flowers is Flora. So for the flower moon, this is all tying into flora. Now, flora festival is in uh, April 27th to May 3rd. Okay, so this ties into the Beltane, uh, but it's just in, it's, but it's in May, right? So it has to do with the May moon, the flower moon. Uh, it's also being observed, it's being called May Day. Right, so it's the May uh, devotions is blessed to the Virgin Mary, which is what we all t we talked about. This the best known modern uh, May Day traditions observed both in Europe and North America include dancing around the Maypole. So she's ties to the Maypole, but she also ties to Dionysus. So it's saying here the mysteries of Dionysus and Aphrodite, and so and like they had actually had orgies so there's sexual energies that they're using you know and i think this is all done to heal people so yeah and it's tied to the beltane so she's the flower flora flower fl the is all tied to the flower moon in may and the, and the may queen and she's on this painting 
at the Apotheosis of Washington at the Capitol Building. She's also known as the goddess Florelia. So this special blood moon, on this map it's saying it's May 16th because it's right at midnight, but it's really May 15th. So I want to go through past things that have happened on May 15th. And of course, it's all tied to spirituality. So May 15th, uh, George Bush take, uh, invites the Queen to an Oakland, a Baltimore Oriole game, okay, baseball game. So she goes to the baseball game with the, the Queen's mother as well. This was in May 15, 1991. Now the reason it ties to spirituality is because in the old world, the Orialdi, the Oriole bird, derives from the Latin Orialis, which means golden. The genus name um, Ecterus is from ancient Greek the yellow bird. So it's the golden oriole. Okay, so it's the golden bird. It's basically, you know, the phoenix. Okay? You're, you're burning. So that's why they went to the oriole game. And they're saying this is, um, you know, in reference to when her parents went there, King George VI and his wife Elizabeth, to United States in June 1939, as uh, Franklin Roosevelt uh, had invited them. No reigning British monarch had set foot on American soil before. So 1939 was the year that they did that big ritual to uh, Eva Maria song being sung, which I did in my last video, right? Which all ties into the Fantasia movie and the rites of spring, right? So it goes back to Dinitas. But here, is, here he is sitting with J.P. Morgan, right? The elite. In recent times, on May 15th, we had uh, the Shrek movie. It won an award. Of course, you know, Shrek is the green man. Uh, then they had uh, Revenge of the Stilth, which is the Star Wars movie. I don't know anything about that movie. And then they had this Eurovision Song Contest, where they had um, a singing called Wild Dancers in Istanbul. So I wanted to see what that was to see if there was any symbolism there. It's actually biblical because they had the four trumps playing. Okay, so they got the four trumps, and then they do this kind of pagan dance, almost like a Beltane dance with the flames, and, you know, it's kind of, you know, referencing to the rites of, uh, of spring again, which is, you know, the, the festival to Pan. Very religious day, May 15th, uh, 1891, they published, the Pope publishes something, 1931, another Pope publishes something on this day, 1961, Pope John XXIII, 23 being DNA, so we have three Popes publishing their works on May 15th. 1957, Operation Grabble. Britain tests its first hydrogen bomb near Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. So there again, Christmas, Christ, and the bomb. May 15th, uh, George Harrison releases Wonderwall in 1968. Now, Wonderwall, his album cover is really interesting. It's the divide of the two realms. So the Wonderwall, right? They're all bathing in the Kumba Mela, which is like the nectar of the gods, they're in the river bathing and they're free and there's, you know, greenery and then there's this guy, business guy, you know, stuck in the matrix behind the brick wall. And that's why Trump keeps going on about the wall, the wall. And you see he has clouds. So the clouds is Neptune, Neptune and Pisces right now. People's minds are in the cloud. Everybody's not in reality. Like we're like living out of the matrix. They're like pretending the matrix is normal. Okay, so nobody's like in touch with reality really, but it's also metaphysical. You can transform through Neptune. It's creative, but that's what the clouds mean. Your, heads are, your head is in the clouds. So this is Neptune, and this is why Trump has a Neptune statue outside Mar Largo. And then George Harrison releases another song on May 15th in 1981, 
releasing all those years ago. So it's almost like, you know, go back and look at all those years ago. I, I dropped something here with this wonder wall. So Oasis did a song in 1995 called Wonderwall, and it's referencing to this song as well. Now, the Wonderwall film was this Danish band called The Fool. There we got the Fool card again. And they actually mention the tarot cards in here. And you can go listen to their songs. They're, quite, it's, they're actually really nice. It's just this Danish band has this one album. So the trailer, there's tons of symbolism in it. There's actually like a guy like Einstein and he's like a scientist and he's looking at this woman and I'm just like, okay, that's Virgo, right? And he's looking at this woman on the wall with a sunspot on it. You can say that would be Einstein's, you know, speed of light when he was, had the sun and the eclipse happening on Zabi Java. And I'm like, okay, that looks like that. So I was just like intuitively reading that. And the next thing they do is that he's looking at a star. Okay, so instantly they're looking at the star. So I'm like, okay, that's all aligning. Then they have Superman in there because you become Superman. They have the white lady, right? She's like the, the green lady. Then she marries. She's the bride. She marries the Einstein guy. Then they have the kiss of death, like the lipstick on him. And then... It, Oasis, the Wonderwall song, has the clown, the fool card, with the blue hat, which is like you burn blue, it just means you're ascended. And then, you know, so it's all there. They, they've done it. Like, it's amazing. And it's gone through, you know, decades, the symbolism from one performer to another, showing us what the Wonderwall is. The symbolism is everywhere. So there's this song from Jack White. And it's called Connected by Love. And they have this thing looming in the sky and the news is talking about it. It's like an asteroid coming in. Okay? Or you could say it's a blood moon. But it's to me it looked like an asteroid in the video. Um, and they're all worried and you know everybody's freaking out like it's the end of days. They also have the twin symbolism in there. Um, and they end up killing a deer, a sacrifice. And then the twins reunite with the mother. So it's, it's all very symbolic. So something crashing into Earth, it, they're showing it in lots of different videos. So maybe there is an asteroid coming, you know, that this NASA was talking about. So who knows? I don't know. All I know is the symbolism. So the funny thing about May 15th, there's all these different holidays. There's Armed Forces Day. There's Doodah Day. Um, there's National Chocolate Chip Day. That's important because uh, I found a link to that. Um, Spring Astronomy Day. So, and then uh, Peace Officers Memorial Day. Any police officers being shot or anything. And then Plant a Lemon Tree. Uh, this is all May 15th. So the whole uh, chocolate chip thing was kind of weird because Stephen Kohlberg uh, had this video he did with Trump making fun of him about Russia, Russia flag. And then they have Trump speaking, you know, uh, mimicking, and he's saying, um, oh, I, I'm never going to eat an Oreo again. But they don't have an Oreo. They have the chocolate chip cookie. Well, the chocolate chip cookie represents May 15th. Now we know. Okay, so it's a, it's a holiday. And I wonder when they made him say Oreo, is it the Oreo bird, right? The Oreo instead of the Oreo. You know, it's just funny. It's just, it's just crazy. And Stephen Colbert, he's brutal, right? He, he's just like two days ago. He goes, Trump tells senators that he's not into golden showers. So they create this whole pee, pee pee episode on, on his show. But yeah, so Trump just dropped again. He's not into golden showers. So that's to do with phosphorus and, you know, the whole thing about, uh, you know, trying to come back and save people. But those people that don't take the right path will not have memory. So maybe he's saying that. I'm not into the golden showers. I want people to ascend instead. So he ends up talking about pee-pee. He talks about Superman. So this is all to do with the Wonderwall freaking film, okay? So that happens to be on May 15th. So Dr. No, thank you. I don't need a bathroom. I'll just pee on the bed. So he's bringing 007 into it again as well. This all happened two days ago on Stephen Colbert's show. So I'm just like, what? It gets nuts, right? It's just like they know the true symbolism and then they mock it. 
so phosphorus, yes, is urine. Yes, it uh, activates DNA, okay, and it tends to make you smarter, right, if you have some uh, right amount of phosphorus in your body. So it, it ties to uh, the penile gland as well. So this is why they mention urine, right, because it's to do with phosphorus. And I couldn't believe it. Somebody sent me this video about the green man. This guy is brilliant, okay? He's a Buddhist. He's a yoga teacher, and he was um, the bodyguard for the Dalai Lama, okay? So he's a very spiritual person. And he did this whole video, you know, probably maybe 20 years ago or so, all about the green man. And you have to go watch it because it's fascinating the way he explains it all. And then in the, in the middle of the video, he starts talking about carbon and how it's got phosphorus in it. And I'm like, oh my God, he's bringing phosphorus into this. So then um, he's saying here, it's almost like the grail and it's made of a mineral and the mineral is like green, right? And it says uh, the emerald and the red blood written in uh, in emerald grape so that um, there's someone called the green king. It's, he's, all, you know, he's talking about all the reference to this esoteric knowledge in our bodies. So you have to go watch it. So he brings up phosphorus. I was just blown away. It's the first person I've heard talk about phosphorus. I can't play the video because I'll get striked, but whenever uh, he says he was reading, it's all about this uh, you know, Celtic king of purity. Um, and then he says, in, in, it's next spring when we all lose our heads. And the chlorophyll using... Uh, creator feature for energy was that happens obviously in the blood disappears and it's replaced with something so it's he's talking about the blood being replaced with chlorophyll it might be part of the fuel mechanism for the glorified body okay so what he's saying is remember I talked about the pale horse that the pale horse is really chlorophyll it's, it's like it's chlorophyll in um, Greek, which means green, so the pale horse is really green. So the whole thing about the green man, like when you transcend, your blood gets changed. So like you transform and you go into this phosphorus state and it becomes like almost like chlorophyll, right? So that's why you, you maybe you turn green, you know? It's like, because <laughs> you have the plant inside you, right? And it's like, that's why Stevie Wonder did that album about the lives of plants. Right? The Flower Power album. So, uh, anyhow, I'm just like, you have to watch this. I'll drop the link. It's absolutely brilliant. It's about an hour long, but it's so well done. So, there was a patient in Canada, 42 year old white Canadian, who de developed nerve damage um, by restricting his blood flow to his lower legs after falling asleep in a sitting position. And he was taking these uh, migraine headache, uh, you know, medication called. Um, some somat um for migraines so anyhow so the doctors start working on him because i guess he is he needed to be in surgery and his blood came out green so they went and looked at in the lab and they kind of figured out that there wasn't enough oxygen getting to the blood from this medication that he was taking so this medication can end up making your blood turn green but i was just like fascinated by this because it's like you know, it has to do with the mythology that you turn green. And they're saying here that the blood actually can turn blue as well. So like blue blood, you know, like the blue man, you know, they have the blue man and the green man. The blue and the green is what's important, right? That's the colors you want to be. The lack of oxygen in the blood less often is caused by high uh, methoglobin, which uh, differs from normal hemoglobin in the oxygen carrying uh, furious iron so it has to do with iron anyhow you guys can look into it i can barely read it it's so small but anyhow so you need to just understand that this is all part of esoteric knowledge is that when this event happens i guess that's how you transform and you become the green blue people they showed us that in the avatar movie right so here they're talking about aluminum also significantly decreases inorganic phosphorus levels in the serum by 19%.
So if you're taking aluminum based products or, you know, the, um, the jab, um, this would affect your phosphorus levels. And I think the phosphorus levels are really important um, in the brain so that you can activate. You know, so I think this is part of the whole thing. And, you know, I've explained before that I think that eventually the harvested people will be harvested for their urine. It has, it's, it's the nectar of the gods. It's the, it's the gold of this realm. And I think the whoever is controlling this realm, you know, the Anunnaki, you know, which were spoken about in the Sumerian texts and everything, Whoever is controlling this realm needs that nectar for them to be able to continue because they're not creators like we are. We can create anything we want just by believing in it. But the whole thing is they control the human consciousness by fear and they control us to believe that everything happening here is like just random. But once you see through the illusion, you realize like this is all a bunch of BS and I can, can, I can create whatever I want. And so it's important that we start creating this doorway to this magical realm. We have to start focusing on it, especially if it's going to happen in six months from now. You know, I'm just kind of like, whoa, this is not what I was expecting. But this is how the download came to me, and I'm presenting it to you. So we just have to see if nothing happens, nothing happens. But I'm, it feels like things are ramping up, like, you know, like we're getting isolated and I can't see them keeping this for another three years, the way we're living. Like, I'll be shocked if we have to live in isolation for three years for this process to happen because the people that have taken the Jabberwocky, you know, is, um, they're just kind of like living like normal lives. Like, they're do -do -do -do, nothing's wrong. So they're going to start to create more fear for them because they're, they're just like thinking everything's going back to normal and they're, it, they're going to have to, create some more drama for them, right? If we just leave the matrix and just start living on our own, it's not enough drama because we're not, it's almost like we don't have the energy to keep fighting the system. We know the system is that's what they want. So why fight it? People want more security. People want more corporate reality um, outside of their bodies instead of doing the inner work. So we can't change that. It's impossible. So anyhow, that's just my thoughts on it all. And um, it just seems everything's ramping up. So if it's happening in six months and the, the ascended souls are supposed to leave halfway through tribulation, you're supposed to, and you're supposed to watch it from afar. So yeah, it makes sense. The timeline makes sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Jab is reference to the Jabberwocky. He's a, a creature, an evil creature that bites the earth. And he's in the Alice in the Looking Glass uh, novels. Another weird coincidence that phosphorus is number 15 and the blood moon is on the 15th. Now, May in Celtic tradition is the Hawthorn month, right? The Hawthorn is this prickly bush. It's like nice little white flowers, but they're very powerful uh, mythology to the Fae, to the fairy people. Okay, to the other realm. It's, it's their tree because they, they protect themselves underneath it. Uh, so this is also connecting really esoterically to uh, spring, the spring, uh, the rite of spring. So they're saying here uh, it's the most difficult night um, when um, Angus calls Hawthorne whitening of the face, a moment when the face goes white at the thought of the challenges that lie before. So, yeah, it's ties to the May Queen and the Oak King, which is really esoteric. So, Hawthorne is traditionally being used as a tree of protection. And it's being used as the crowning of the May Queen. So, this is a Hawthorne crown, right? It's a crown of thorns. Um, I have them on my property, Hawthorne bushes, and they're really, really prickly. Like, the needles on them are hard as a rock. But when I was looking at this, I was like, ah, oh, the Hawthorne crown. Oh, my God, it's the crown of Christ, right? Look, it, when you Google the crown of Christ, it's the same thing. So the Hawthorne month, it relates to Aquarius, which is like the phoenix, Aries, this is your crown chakra, and Gemini, the twins, one's immortal. Um, ties to the planet Mars, which uh, also rules Scorpio, right? which is, you know, ties to Ophiuchus, the doorway out of here. The day is Saturday. 
Okay, so now they're talking about here that the goddesses are Brigid, Danu, and Frigid, which is Norse mythology. So, and it also ties to the fairies, the magical beings, the fairies. Prometheus is also the flame, which has to do with, um, you know, uh, ascension. And the, the animals is the hedgehog and the wolf. I've seen a lot of wolf symbolism, and uh, now I know where it ties to. So it ties to the Hawthorne month, which is May. So the Danu, the Danu is a goddess. The Danu, meaning Dan, right? The Tuath, the Dan, which is the Dan, which is Dan, D-N-A, D-A-N. Okay, so she's the goddess mother of the Tuath, the Dan. So this is all to do with Celtic tradition, and they disappear, right? They're the tribe that disappears. They're known as the snakes, and St. Patrick chased them out of Ireland because he chased the snakes away. So look at her symbolism here. She has the, the, um, the triskelin, which is the Odin symbol, right? There's the, the three spirals, and then she has the nectar of the gods, and she's, you know, presenting that. So, wow, and she's got the moon at her head, so it all ties to the moon. So I'm just like, whoa. So I'm kind of like, ah, six months from now, is this what's going to happen? Like, it's starting to like, mm. so we'll have to just keep watching the symbolism and uh, seeing what goes on. But it's definitely an eye opener for me. And there's another blood moon in November uh, in 2022, but then there's none until Pi Day. So it's either, you know, next year or we're just waiting it out till Pi Day. So uh, in, um, on March 14th, 2025 which is a long way. Like, it's like, I'm like, oh, it's getting too long now. For, like, the, with them torturing us and them just living normal. Something has to give. Something has to, you know, and it feels like it. It feels like we're right at the calm before the storm. I just, it, uh, to me, that's what it feels like. Something's going to bust soon. Because they can't segregate the whole world like this and expect everything just to carry on, right? Um, and so that's the timeline. And it's not going to go back to normal. It's never going back to normal. It's going to more... Um, surveillance, more, you know, security, because that's what people are opting for. They want more security, m m the masses. They, they don't want to do the inner work. They don't want to work with their fears. They just want somebody else to fix their fears so they can get back to normal and be distracted um, and live a normal life. But that's not what's happening right now. This is a spiritual war, and they need to uh, choose their path. But I don't think they're going to keep them all calm and happy for uh, the next three years. Something's going down. So this is what I put together. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please like and subscribe so this my channel gets more traction. See the mark happen on everybody or we leave beforehand? That's the question, right? We're segregated. We now cannot um, enter and we cannot buy and sell. And that was part of what we had to witness now, are we going to witness them take the mark? I don't know. I'm not sure about that timeline. So we just have to wait and see and see how it all goes. But um, if you want any readings, let me know. It's quietened down a little bit. And it's always good to know your life path. And it just makes you feel more secure and standing in your truth. Bliss to you guys. Thanks. Bye.